off or anyone. Hopefully I'm back up. Sorry gang. Just got cut off. Yeah, it's back. Yeah, sorry about that, gang. I don't know where we got cut off. Uh, ah, there's some stuff. Aha, that was me. I was asking about the piano. Oh, was it you, Sam? Okay. Oops, I lost the rest of the... There was some other... Uh, another chat post that was put up, but... Uh, um, I lost it. I was trying to read it on the screen instead of the chat because I had to reload my page. So my apologies about that, losing the connection. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, it is windy here, so who knows? Maybe some, something is out. Uh, if we lose our connection, I'll try to come back again. If there is, by the way, if there's any math um, math questions you have that you want to work on, that supersedes anything else. So if you have any questions, don't wait for me to reply to finish what I'm saying. Just a troll must have gained superpowers, maybe. Uh, sometimes what happens if we get a wave gigantic wave of trolls coming in uh, we lose the connection right so maybe that's what happened I'm not sure uh, but if there's any math questions you have you know don't worry about cutting me off in mid sentence or anything like this or mid thought just post your questions and we'll deal with it last time we sort of made a list here of what we're gonna do and we dealt with it right uh, but as as far as getting clients goes uh, just out of curiosity do any of your students watch your videos streams I have one student I know that watches my streams and he's he's on twitch and he's a huge gamer I usually don't tell my students that I'm doing these streams I don't tell my students I'm doing these streams the only thing my students know about me regarding my online activity my students that I see in person actually my students that I work uh, remotely as well uh, the only thing they know about me what I do online is what I've put up on math in real life just the mathematics content and I haven't loaded anything on there uh, just because I don't have the uh, I need a serious upgrade to my system to be able to uh, mirror some of the math content that we're doing on 420 math and math in real life so I haven't loaded anything on math in real life for like two three years now uh, but that's the only thing they know that I do, except for one student that tracked me down. <laughs> and he's on Twitch, and he does watch me on Twitch. I've had that student for a long time, long time. Great kid. Hey, Chicho, nice to finally make another one. Ah, Lord, how are you doing? Welcome to another live stream again. Man, I'd love to have a teacher with such a great online presence. Uh, thanks, man. I just, uh, you know, I love what I do. I think it's easy. Uh, for me it's relatively easy to do what I'm doing uh, some of the stuff takes a fair bit of setup um, the the content that I create takes a fair bit of back-end work uh, especially the mathematics and stuff uh, because I do want to create series of things so I try to plan out uh, you know 10 20 videos out <laughs> Uh, you know make sure it's linking back to the original content that I'm creating whatever it might be right um, but I love what I do so I think it's easy to have this uh, this presence um, but as far as uh, uh, before I lose before we continue on anymore uh, the way I acquire clients right so I moved from Vancouver to Victoria and I didn't have all the connections here right so all I did was post uh, you know put myself online you know math tutor available and stuff like this and usually what happens at the end of the school year last few months you end up getting you know people parents start going to freak out mode because they see their kids failing and they try to find tutors and just like our current education system where there's a lot of bad teachers around there's a lot of bad schools around there's a lot of bad tutors around so they try their hands with different tutors and some of them find me right and as soon as I get one client and if they know other people that's all you need in general for me as soon as I'm able to get three clients in a city that I'm seeing locally from there the word of mouth goes out right because at the end of the school year they're all in panic mode they try to learn things speedy Gonzalez and I start working with them 
usually we see serious improvement and if you see serious improvement those parents are back the next year and at the beginning of the following year I start getting more clients because word of mouth goes out so that's how I acquire my clients hello Nicholas how are you doing hey Chicho hey chat my question got cut off I know it's not math related but any suggestions would be very welcome any birthday gifts ideas from my granddad he isn't an active he isn't as active now but I also don't want to get him uh, boring gifts like hats scarves or socks any help please uh, hope this doesn't interrupt the stream no uh, hello mask how are you doing Nicholas uh, what I did many years ago I didn't do it for my uh, grandfather but I did it for my dad uh, I took the time to help him out to find because he's really uh, our family has always been into news and politics and stuff like this so I don't know if your granddad is on that level but I'm pretty sure your grandfather has certain hobbies uh, certain things that he loves doing right so many years ago I because my father was into politics economics and stuff like this I took the time to sit him down behind the computer and he had learned rudimentary stuff how to deal with the computer and I showed him different websites and different news channels and places where uh, some people write articles right like consortium news and stuff like this so I showed him all these different websites where he could acquire information and that was like 20 years ago right 20 25 years ago or so right let's say 20 years ago so I took the time and got him on that plot on those platforms and I check out on him every time okay every time I see him to see what he's doing and I introduce new sources of news and information to him and that keeps him occupied and he's a news junkie now he has his web his computer on all the time check stuff so that's one thing I did um, the other thing if your dad loves drinking liqueurs make him liqueurs <laughs> make him your own just imagine if he if he likes little sips of alcohol just make jars of different liqueurs like color coated like just four or five different ones with fresh fruit and organic cane sugar and if he likes uh, if he likes gin gin if he likes vodka vodka uh, those are the only two I've worked with clear you, you need clear basically I think anyway uh, I do anyway just make a bunch of those and take it to him and say here you go granddad here's a bunch of delicious homemade liqueurs st. Martin how are you doing good evening all or good morning Chicho good morning for me and good evening to everyone else hmm, not a bad idea might go to the liquor, liquor Richards, you know. good luck. don't don't turn your grandfather into an alcoholic right uh, but liqueurs anything homemade is amazing right like for me uh, Nicholas I don't buy presents to give to anyone really it, a long time ago I told people no more presents I don't want any presents I'm not gonna buy you any presents for a while family kept on buying me presents on birthdays Christmas they would give me presents and I wouldn't give them anything right and then that lasted for a few years and then they stopped getting me presents which was fantastic which is what I wanted right um, but I do when I make food when I make pastries and stuff like this or if I, if I see a great deal in the store if it's got this food that I like family likes I buy them like bread or pastries or or, or nuts and whatever it might be do you know how to integrate x square times uh, to x without looking it up x squared integrate integrate integration is the opposite of taking a derivative right so for polynomial uh, if it's x to a power of n right the derivative is n times x to the power of n minus one so when you take the integral you do the reverse of that right so you know for polynomials it's fairly easy for the other types of functions uh, you have to sort of put it into your memory bank or have a sheet that you're referencing and stuff like this but I'm not really uh, clever never clever never uh, thanks for the question but I'm not really dealing with calculus right now my final module 
that I'll create many moons from now. I don't know when I'll get to it. Uh, that's my end goal. Maybe when I'm, if I live to be 80 or 90 years old, we'll get to it then. Maybe I can do it in my 70s or 60s, right? Uh, if I can kick this into complete full-time mode, just focus on mathematics, uh, we'll get it done then, okay? Taylor, expand, integrate, term by term, then resume. Yeah, it's just basically like this, right? So I don't know what the terms are called anymore. Uh, Taylor expansion. I know I dealt with it many moons ago, right? So if you have a function f of x, right, is equal to x cubed plus x squared plus x plus I don't know number two, right? If you're going to take the derivative of this, this comes down, this comes down, this comes down, and that goes zero, right? So the derivative of this is three x squared plus two x plus one and that turns it to zero right the the function for taking a derivative let's grab a thicker or darker black the integration of this is this this number comes down three comes down the power and this becomes three minus one plus two comes down this becomes two minus one plus one comes down oops one this becomes x one minus one and that just turns into zero and those turn into this right now if you're going to go the other way around, if you're going to take the integral of this, then what's the formula? you got to divide by 3 and stuff like this. You're just basically doing the reverse. I don't want to do it right now because I'm pretty sure there's little things I keep on forgetting about, right? Sing it with me. Have you seen The Lion King? Yes, I have. Many, 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 too many times. Sing it with me when I was a young war warthog. You want to follow a procedure where you use integration by parts and always choose the polynomial term x squared as you try that. Hello, you beautiful bearded wonder. Gentle chaos king, how are you doing? <laughs> Mask, thank you very much. Uh, Mask of Raven, thank you very much for replying for that, for the calculus stuff. Ah, oh, you didn't sing it back. I'll sing it for you. Oh yeah, thank you, uh, Venom. Thank you for the bits, by the way. How do you sing it? I don't know the lyrics. I've seen it many, many, many times back in the 90s, right? This is a man, Jar, Jar Dinosaur. Gyar, Gyar Dinosaur. Gia Dinosaur, Gyar Dinosaur. God, I can't pronounce your names. I only remember the chorus, sorry. I don't remember the chorus. When I was a young warthog, da, 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 all, of, all I remember is, is it Lion King? It's traumatizing for children. It really, for little kids, it's a traumatizing movie. It's like I've seen little kids watching Lion King, and it's there when the father, you know, is killed, falls down the canyon, the cliff, and you know i can't remember the little lion's name uh pumba, pumba? i don't know long live the king king knows uh I i've seen kids watching it and they're like their eyes are like this big and they're oh yeah simba and their mouths are open and it's like really traumatizing that's what a lot of uh walt disney movies are simba simba I love watching it, but uh, Mufasa's death broke me. Yeah, yeah. Devastating, devastating, right? I don't know. I personally, uh, you know, I'm being general across the board right now, but I would rather show kids, children, uh, other animation than Walt Disney animations okay there's a lot of uh, programming brainwashing a uh, lot of imagery which is not suitable for very young kids uh, in Walt Disney movies uh, animation uh, I personally wouldn't uh, 
And that's one of the, yeah, we'll go there anyway, but uh, that's my take. <coughs> hey, say Germany. Mathematics, what should we do for mathematics game? What do we got? What do we got? It's the end of the school year. There's got to be questions coming up. All right? I know my, some of my students are in panic mode. Some, some recent students, my old time students are not in panic mode. They know what's going on. What? Are you dropping actual red bills now? <laughs> no. <laughs> We're not going to go down the Disney route. <laughs> Sorry, Big C. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Really, a long time ago, man, I wrote a long time ago. I don't want to. I think the root cause of our society's ills is education. One of the root causes. There's food as well, and you know, corporate propaganda and stuff like this. But education uh, is one of the core issues with our current civilization. And my contribution is just basically for this stuff is basically trying to teach mathematics and empowering people to be able to analyze data and question the system uh, using using mathematics right just straight out once you look at look at the world through the lens of mathematics and quantify the world and look at the data you can't help but get to the truth it's it's there right is rhetoric and emotions and and feelings that take people down the dark road if you just pause back and realize that your feelings really don't matter right in the big scheme of things the truth matters and if you know mathematics you can usually get to the truth fairly rapidly right your last stream was 2 a.m for me i was too tired will the current event stream always be that late no no saint uh, germany uh, it won't always be that late sometimes i'll do uh current uh, set up the current streams in the morning but i tell you what we're going to do uh current events live stream most likely every week for next three weeks three or four weeks uh there's a couple of things that need to be played out i've sort of sorted out what how the world's going to roll out for the next five to ten years for myself i'm comfortable with what's happening not comfortable with it but sort of that's where i think we're going um so for the next two to three weeks we're going to do one every week most likely we might continue it into the summer depending how what happens with the situation but if you send me a message uh germany if you send me a message uh later you know in a few days uh when i'm setting up the streams for next week okay so for example send me a reminder by tuesday uh, can you you know just say chicho can you set up your current live streams in the mornings for my time right and i will and definitely that'll be easier for people that are in europe hello air hello taco how are you doing hello deutschland hey taco hello raven mask hello taco everyone's saying hello <laughs> hello to each other um regarding mathematics what should we do what should we do what are my students doing wow that's very kind of no it's like for me i just want the dialogue to be open for people that want to participate to participate because a lot of platforms are censoring people and telling people not to talk about certain issues right i want to do the opposite i want to open up the platforms and let people talk about whatever they want right and trust me i realize what i'm the pandora's box i'm opening right because sometimes and i do this with people i've I've had I've sat down and had discussions with extreme left and extreme right in person where people are telling me you know I speak multiple languages and a couple other languages Armenian Farsi I've had people tell me to speak English in their country and it's just ridiculous right and I've had people on the other side tell me that oh I should be punching Nazis in the face and I'm like no man you guys are both idiots right uh, it, not so directly i try to engage them right just plant seeds for the future i'm doing great lasagna for me in belgium it's now uh 7 23 so it's great timing awesome lord europe europe yes now it's 
good timing for me as well okay so Europe likes mornings in Chicho time I applied a, a job at McDonald's and I'm waiting for a call or an email by Sunday nice nice I hope you get it uh, I hope it's a good position if you're working under management I hope the management's good I have I had a relative like I don't agree with McDonald's as a business as a as a as what they're peddling for sure we we're all on the same times on taco says uh, but uh, I've had a relative work at McDonald's and he many years ago back in the 90s 80s and 90s right and he praises McDonald's because McDonald had uh, put him through school right he, he got in at the lower ground and he worked his way up to manager managerial position and throughout that process McDonald's would give him time off and also pay him for his schooling and all said and done after a few years you know he was manager he became manager at McDonald's and at the same time he ended up getting his accounting degree right and he became a full-time accountant so on that front uh, full respect for the management that allowed him to do that because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to do that schooling he was in the states schooling in the United States is insanely expensive yeah yeah a lot of Europe is pretty much in the same time zone uh it may be uh it may be is a one or two hour change but nothing too much cool thanks i want to be work uh, my way from somewhere from the bottom or middle to the manager yeah that's exactly what my relative did he's not there anymore obviously he's an accountant full-time charter accountant so pretty high level up but he learned a lot of a lot of managerial skills and a lot of bureaucracy involved with working for such a large company and, um, the management thing was very challenging for him and they paid for a school right gave him time off and you know on the promise that would come back and work for them more and he did Madrid we got Madrid we got Belgium we got Germany very cool very cool and we got the States I'm not sure if we have any Canada I'm Canada we do have Canada right uh, as far as uh, school goes like just to give you an example of her how horrendous the education system in uh, in Canada is especially in regards to mathematics I come across uh, just going back to how I acquire clients there is uh, one of the ways uh, it's like a mini world cup here it's like a mini world cup here indeed uh, uh, a lot of the clients that I get initially is usually they usually come to me from classes where a lot of kids are doing poorly and I had a few months ago I picked up a client uh, that's in a class that more than half the class is failing right and we and he was as, at the time as well and we started working together now he's passing barely you know I'm trying to teach him like five years worth of or four years worth of mathematics in like just a few months and he's able to absorb the information in but his friends were failing so now I'm starting to get clients from his uh, clients that are his friends word of mouth going out they're seeing his marks go up and they're still down here failing and a lot of them are going to be doing summer school unfortunately for no reason really um, very unfortunate um, and that's leaving leaving them with a bad taste in my, their mouth regarding mathematics I'm a bar manager I use mathematics a lot of my job yeah a lot of the service industry it's hardcore mathematics just counting out you know the at the end of the night when you're doing your numbers and stuff like this and on the fly you have to you know when people are giving you their orders and stuff like this on the fly you have to figure out what the numbers are can you give us an example just on uh, st martin's uh, uh, doing rotas locating hours uh, to budget doing rotas what's a rotas r-o-t-a-s allocating hours to budgets so you're managerial martin that's good any manager will have to do right a lot of mathematics and just uh by the way taco one thing you should do uh 
when you get the job at McDonald's, when you get it, you will get it, hopefully, fingers crossed. If not there, somewhere else. Uh, or if anybody's working in any, for any company, always keep track of your hours, have a spreadsheet going of how much you should have been paid. And whenever you get your paycheck or you get e-transfer e or whatever it is, make sure that is the amount you were supposed to be paid. Time cars for staffs, yeah, for sure. Uh, shift rotations, shift rotations, okay. Uh, make sure whatever you're getting paid matches what you have in your spreadsheet. For me, it's happened in the past where they don't pay you enough. A lot of times they don't pay you enough. You have to contact them and say, hey, you owe me money. Sometimes they pay you too much. When they pay you too much, if you think you're, you're doing, well, yeah, they paid me too much, right? I'll go spend it like mad. That'll come out in the long run. And then they'll contact you and say, oh, you owe us like $2,000 because we paid you too much for a few months, right? So keep track of, that's one place you have to use your mathematics. I study bookkeeping, so it speaks for itself that I use a lot of uh, math, uh, a whole lot of math for sure. So I should keep track of work and uh, to make sure match how much I got money yeah for sure taco 100% for any make it a make it a habit begin right now right because that's what I've noticed a lot of people don't keep track of their money coming in their wages coming in what what is supposed to be coming in right and that goes uh, uh, double so for your expenses for your expenses you should keep track of it if you have any expenses that you can you know pass on to uh, the company you're working for right but always keep track of your hours uh, when you're working for a company personally I don't do it myself because I'm working all the time uh, on whatever it might be right for my own business if I kept track of the hours I put into my things I'm probably getting paid like a dollar an hour not really but <laughs> but it's a it's life for me it's life it's like I don't expect to be paid for living my life doing what I love it's nice to be for sure but uh, you can't get paid for every single minute that you work right? and averaging last year's budget to predict busy periods and years yeah for sure I'm always counting always counting like when you're running a business one thing you'll notice when you're running a business you have peak times low times right can we look at how to budget living expenses on the board say based on the average annual income for sure I haven't seen uh, uh, the VOD uh, what were the topics yesterday maybe uh, Australian elections I heard Australian elections there's oh Austria someone posted a thing about Austria um, one of the people got nailed the uh, Austrian elections it's not over yet is it uh, same Germany as far as Nicholas, let's do let's do a simple budget if we want to do right. Like for example, before we get into a budget, oops, sorry. Before we get into a budget, here I'll show you one thing that I do for myself, right? Uh, when it comes to just tracking, because I look at my analytics, the videos that I put on YouTube, right? Uh, and I'm starting to track some of the some of the stats coming from what I'm what I'm doing on Twitch as well, right? So for me right now, I mentioned a while ago that I'm into, I'm into decentralizing my work right now, right? So I'm putting on, you know, doing a lot of live streams here on Twitch. And I've sort of reduced the number of videos I'm putting on YouTube, right? The reason I'm going to go back to creating a lot of videos on YouTube, but the reason I'm putting a little bit more effort on a little bit more time on the Twitch is because I want to kick up the Twitch subs because I do want to decentralize. I don't want to rely on just YouTube, right? So I'm putting work here, I'm putting work in a few different places uh, just to have multiple streams of revenue coming in, right? So if you're, if you're trying to manage your budget, manage your finances, one of the first things you need to do right now in our current economic system, and this is gonna be doubly so for the future as well, right? You can't just rely on one source of income or you shouldn't just rely on one source of income to become anti-fragile which is basically for you to be able to roll with the punches because there's a lot of shifts happening uh, 
in in the world right now I earn 30,000 pounds a year generally 30,000 pounds that comes up to like uh, 45 uh, 45,000 Canadian approximately I believe if you do a direct uh, if we do a conversion okay but one thing you need to do is become uh, something that uh, learned a term I learned from uh, Nassim Nicholas Taleb's uh, book right skin in the game anti-fragile means if things seriously shift you won't get hurt too badly so if you have only one source of income if things seriously shift and that source of income gets cut which is a trap that a lot of people fall into uh, in our current world right now and the reason they fall into this is because they've been told that's the thing to do right go get a career somewhere and put your time in and you start getting you know build up your stocks and make sure you have your pension going and stuff like this and contribute there and whatnot but a lot of people have been caught with this in the last 10 15 years is all of a sudden certain companies are automating they're going bankrupt they're being bought out there's mergers and acquisitions and they're losing their jobs right so for 20 years they've been working somewhere all of a sudden they need to transition into something else but for 20 years have been or 10 years have been doing one thing if there's a company that wants you to be innovative they're not really going to be hiring anyone that's done the same thing for 20 years right and that source of income will get cut so what you need to do is for me anyway that's the way i'm approaching it have multiple sources of income right which is the anti-fragile aspect of it now keeping in that mind keeping that in mind where you have multiple sources of income coming in if you're doing personal entrepreneur stuff i don't know if you want to call it entrepreneur but living your life right what you're going to notice that things are in cycle it's seasonal right so for example just if you look at ad revenue coming in from youtube right if we do revenue here money and we put this over time zero to 12 right we got 12 months six okay this is january this is december okay so january february march april may june july august september october november december so we're not going to call this zero we're going to call this one we should call it zero sort of uh, let's call it zero okay just clicks back there right so during december right and october and stuff ad revenue on youtube is more okay so basically this is sort of the chart you see when you're looking at what kind of ad revenue you're generating from youtube where if this is you know whatever you're getting it comes down during well it's not that steep but let's check it out let's put a wave in there it's basically a wave right so you sort of see this and during august and stuff it's less and then kicks back up again right going up to christmas so this is the cycle that you sort of seeing right this is the period 12 12 year cycle so if you're trying to roll out a new project if you need the funds coming in right the time you should be doing that is basically from february let's call this february uh, September September October November it picks up right so we call this November right from November to February you're gonna start getting more revenue coming in where you can do things right so wherever you're working when you're trying to budget you should also not just look at where you're spending money you should also be looking at how much money is coming in and at what periods you have more funds coming in right this goes you know you can overlay this and in general what you want this to happen is you want the trend to be doing this right over time so this is money and this is time in years now years and this is going to be months right so we're scaling up or scaling down you can go this way to go by weeks right we did a video on this for personal finance where we're looking at the different time frames you have to keep in mind right so if you're doing a budget you got to keep this in mind when are you going to be rolling things out what year are you going to be rolling things out what are your expenses what else are you going to be kicking up right uh let me read this comment taco uh the boss lady said 
that we will be working six days a week and night shifts will pay extra as a bonus so my pay is 700 bam bam i don't know what bam is uh for four per four equals 175 minus one uh equals week pay bonus is unknown amount i should also uh, ask how much a bonus is uh, pays week 175 i'm not sure what that is uh, taco 700 bam per four i'm assuming you're getting 700 dollars it's not dollars though bam i don't know what bam is uh 700 dollars per week equals 175 minus one day equals pays weeks mm, okay are you guys talk are you guys going to be paid per week in canada usually paychecks come every two weeks so you get paid twice a month if you're working for a corporation right uh no 700 band is bosnian mark bosnian mark wow cool bosnian mark okay so you're getting paid 700 ba bands so let's do let's do tacos budget okay so i'm going to take this down so keep this in mind if you're if you're working and the bonuses and by the way uh taco uh what happens in this part of the world certain corporations during christmas times they give you bonuses so you might be making straight up salary and then at christmas time you get a little bonus right for one time bonus and that's a little bit extra money coming in right so let's say we have 700 band I don't know what the symbol for BAM is. We're going to call it BAM. You can choose to be paid in weeks or months. Oh, wow. Weeks or months. 45P equals I. 45P equals I. Doop. Equals 1. I'm not sure. 75 minus 1. Uh, day. So you're getting bi-weekly. 1 Bosnian mark. 1 Bosnian mark. 75 p equals one bosnian mark okay that's cool okay so let's say you have seven 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 hundred bam per week per week right that's why you're getting uh four weeks per month right one bosnian mark four weeks per uh, so we multiply this by four right zero zero twenty eight so you're gonna get paid 28 bam per month right multiply this by 12 right because I'm, assume, I'm assuming if you even get time off christmas time you're still going to get paid for it right so if you multiply this by 12 times 10 uh, well let's do this zero zero six one four five zero 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 eight two one zero zero six da, 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 three one three so you're getting paid thirty three thousand six hundred bam per year okay so let's throw that up 33 33,600 33,600 bam per year okay oh bam is monthly pay 175 is week pay oh bam is monthly pay you'd be making good money then eh? <laughs> You need, you need you need a raise to 700 that'd be good taco so let's multiply that per that's per month so we're going to multiply that by 12 right yeah so if we multiply that by 12 2 times 7 is 14 and 10 times that is 7,000 so it's going to be 8,000 oh let's do it anyway here zero zero fourteen zero 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 seven right eight thousand four hundred right bam per year okay so let's throw that on Eight thousand four hundred bam per year. How much is uh, rent? <laughs> I'm sorry to get your hopes up. Me too. Uh, how much is rent, Taco, in uh, let's say a studio or one bedroom in uh, Bosnia? How much do you pay per rent? So let's calculate our expenses here, right? So this is what we got coming in, revenue. 
Here's our expenses. Oops, expenses, right? So revenue, we got 8,400. Okay. We got 8,400 revenue coming in. Hopefully you're gonna get a bonus at the end of the year. Uh, hopefully, or you're doing some type of investments as well. So what we have to figure out is rent food okay usually you do this per month anyway right but this is we're gonna put this in total year per year okay and then we're gonna put 700 here per month okay and what you want to do is you want to do your expenses per month you don't want to go for a year rent is for around 700 1200 per month for a two bedroom apartment okay so if it's 700 per month if you're making this per month, then that's not enough to live in a two bedroom apartment. That's for sure, right? So if rent is 700 to 1200 per month, so you can bear, barely pay rent, exactly, right? But that's for a two bedroom, right? So for example, 71 pounds per week, if my math is right. If, if we're gonna do a weekly, for me, I sometimes it depends sometimes you can do weekly budgets or bi-weekly budgets but i recommend doing monthly budgets personally if you're gonna start doing budgets you don't want to go to micro budgeting yourself unless you're really on paper thin right uh, also one bedroom apartment are rare to find or they're hard to find wow i live with uh, my mom now but what about uh, roommates yeah you can get roommates so let's assume you're gonna go two bedroom, right? And let's pick the middle ground. Let's say it's gonna cost you a thousand for a two bedroom apartment, so you're gonna be paying five hundred for rent, right? So if you're paying five hundred per rent, you only got two hundred left, right? So two hundred is not a lot. In general, this is what you you know they tell you, right? Which as far as I'm concerned, they pulled their numbers out of their behinds, right? Because I don't trust the people who pulled these numbers out, right? Um, I don't know what their agendas are. But in general, they say this. They say accommodations, housing, housing should be anywhere between a quarter to a third of your income food should be anywhere from a quarter to a third of your income so if you're paying half your salary to housing you're paying too much and 500 out of 700 is way more than the house right so if you go 500 divided by 700 kill the seven so it's five over seven five divided by seven here let's use a calculator Five divided by seven. What is that? Come on. Five divided by seven is seventy-one percent. This means seventy-one percent of your income would be paid towards housing, which is way too much, right? Way too much. This thing is talking about a quarter to a third. Is talking about twenty-five percent to thirty-three percent of your salary being paid for housing. Okay. You gotta find more roommates, sure. You gotta find not roommates. You gotta part find a partner, and your roommate has to find a partner. That way, you will have four people living in a two-bedroom apartment, right? And if you divide a uh, thousand by four, it means you're paying two hundred and fifty ban per month, and that is brings you into this range, right? So four people in a two-bedroom apartment in your area on seven hundred ban a month would be within the range you're looking for right so let's clean this up a little bit let me write this more cleanly since we're going down the rabbit hole with this so you're making 700 ban per month we're making 8400 ban per year okay uh housing we're gonna say it's anywhere between 25 to 
to 33%. Food is going to be anywhere between 25 to 30%, 33%, let's say. Let's make that 33%. And by the way, this 33%, We've seen inflation in, uh, you see inflation in Canada's come up. Food in Canada was more towards the 20% mark 10, 15 years ago, 15, 15, 20 years ago, right? So about 20% of your income would have gone towards food. Because of an inflation cost of food going up, now we're paying close to 30% of our income for food right so Canadians have taken a huge hit when it comes to buying groceries you have to buy a permanent apartment in the 80s and hope it didn't get bombed during the 90s yeah unfortunately unfortunately right unfortunately or during uh, for the Eastern blocks I know I know this because I know people who've lived in the Eastern block right uh, before the Iron Curtain came down uh, USSR basically one uh, one thing that happened during that period is there wasn't too much homelessness in the USSR from what I've been told right and people had apartments and stuff like this so when the Eastern Bloc came down the wall came down a lot of people cashed in on their apartments and they sold their apartments those people made a mistake right because they didn't get too much money for it and the value of the money was too uh, you know it didn't buy you too much so they blew that money the people who held on to their housing from that period are living okay now right so that's our division right now so anywhere between 50 percent 50 percent to 66 percent of your income goes towards just housing and food right you also have to have uh, sort of what do you call it uh, buffer you want to call it let's call it savings right? savings now savings what you want to do you want to put you know you need a buffer now that's on to you depending on where you live if you live somewhere where you don't have health care you need much more savings if you live in a country that provides you health care you could do with a little bit less right every apartment near the wall got demolished because um, people used to jump and possibly break their legs jumping the early wall wow taco i guess you're young i love this you love this thing looks nice <laughs> so let's clean this up a little bit more okay let's make this revenue per month okay so we're gonna we started off and this is something that's gonna happen if you're gonna create a budget you lay some stuff down and then you're going to look at it and you're going to you're going to say okay i'm going to clean this up a little bit all right so we're talking about revenue per month so this is budget so we're going to give it a title budget uh per month monthly budget let's call it monthly budget all right monthly budget all right and this is revenue revenue coming in and we're doing 700 band oops my bees suck 700 band coming in right as far as saving goes taco do you have i hope putting 10 percent on my salary for savings 10 percent awesome let's do it so 10 percent i'm assuming bosnia you guys have some kind of health care provider right i'm i'm assuming because a lot of eastern bloc countries did or do right now you also need entertainment really otherwise you go crazy okay now your entertainment could be very little budget wise a lot of time wise so your entertainment could be going for walks in the forest going to the beach getting together with friends and playing board games right so entertainment cost percent is fluctuates a lot comics maybe comics maybe here comics expensive right like i i know people that can't afford to buy comics they're way too expensive and i tell them man go on ebay you can buy lots of comics for very cheap because they're not 
you know, they're not considered investor quality comics. Who cares, right? We have basic health care for prescriptions and checkups, and the employer may help. Okay, awesome, Taco. So 10% savings, that's pretty good. Okay, a lot of people here in my part of the world, they don't even put 1% towards savings, right? I'm guilty of that as well, but I've, I've gone through serious transitions, right? There's been periods in my life where I put, you know, 50% of my money towards savings because I know there's a period coming up where I need to take a lot of time off, right? So savings, if you have money in savings, what that does, it buys you freedom, okay? One thing that's very important is if you're living on a budget, don't go into debt because debt brings on interest payments that you have to make. And if you're making interest payments, that's eating away on your core salary or your base salary. So whatever you do, try not to go into debt. Okay. Try not to go into debt. Okay. So we have savings and we need entertainment. Entertainment. Okay. Now entertainment can be let me write this so you can actually read it. Right? Entertainment. Let's let's call it fun. Right? Fun. Not that you might not be having fun taking care of your house, making food, right? We're just calling it fun, but it's entertainment. Okay. I hope to spend the remainder of my money not including savings for entertainment the remainder of it goes to entertainment okay so all of it, except for the 10 percent here's something i recommend taco okay so if we do that little math on the side let's do a little math on the side here okay here let's take this down well let's leave that off for now okay let's do a little math on the side pick both extremes right so if housing is going to be 25 percent, food is going to be 25% saving is going to be 10% that's 60% right there minimum this should be mandatory what you should be doing right how much is a Big Mac in Bosnia taco that's a great question Martin that'll give us an idea of what the cost of living in is in Bosnia for everyone so we're using a Big Mac six band Okay, let's do a little calculation. Hold on, before we get into this, let's do a little calculation. Six band for a, a Big Mac, right? Six band, Big Mac, Big Mac, okay? So six divided by 700, 700 band uh, salary. So this is your units, right? Uh, currency. Let's figure out what percent that is, right? So six divided by 700, we get 0 0.0086, which is 0.86% of your monthly salary would be a Big Mac, right? Now, compare that to Canada, and you can do it for whichever country you're in right i haven't bought a big mac in a gazillion years like really is that the meal price oh good question is that just a big mac or does that come with fries and a coke that's the meal price so that's a full meal so it's not just a big mac it's a big mac meal right meal okay guys anyone that's gone to mcdonald's tell me what the price of a big mac thing is in europe it's four uh four pounds 13 and what's uh i'm assuming 700 band per month is on the low end taco right because that's working at mcdonald's what's a base salary compatible brexit <laughs> that's so funny what's uh martin what's a base salary in like a low end base salary in london or well london would be crazy expensive but in the uk would it would it not be better to ask what the average weekly shop would be for uh taco's current household weekly shop you mean uh food wise 
one of the things is, uh, Nicholas, Taco's living at home with his mom right now, right? So the odds are the parents are doing the weekly buy. And a lot of people have noticed that move out of their house and um, for the first time anyway, and they live in by themselves. They're not really cooking too much. They're eating out a lot. Uh, in Belgium, a Big Mac menu is like six euros or something. So you're all having uh, great deals. Okay. So 18,000 pounds is a yearly salary. We're going to divide that by 12. So let's go 18 divided by 12. Doop, doop. 18 divided by 12 we get 1500 pounds remove the father my dad died a year ago remove the father okay I'm sorry to hear that taco okay 430 okay yeah grocery yeah I know it was the parent but thought uh, we uh, would work that out for one. for sure we'll work it out Nicholas right now I want to figure out what the uh, uh, cost of living is to a certain degree using Big Mac meals as the standard right so if it's 1500 in so this is Bosnia Bosnia okay and this is the UK oops UK right UK you got 430 pounds divided by 1500 okay and what does that give us it's cheaper here relatively speaking right 4.3 divided by 1500 this is equal to 0 0.0029 which is wait a second let me do that right yeah which is 0 0.29 percent right so Big Macs are expensive in Bosnia, Big Mac meal deals, right? Relative to what they are in the UK. So if I was living in Bosnia on low budget, I would not be eating Big Macs. I wouldn't be eating out anyway, right? So Taco, if you want to do a comparison of what it costs you to what it costs them, to find a number, EU Big Mac expensive as well. EU Big Mac, how much is an EU Big Mac? And what's the base salary in the EU? But if you want to find out how much more expensive Big Macs are relative to UK, just divide this, divide this by this, right? So if you go 0 0.86 divided by 0 0.29, right? 0.86 divided by 0.29, you get almost three times more expensive oops well three right so three times okay so you're paying three times so basically to get an idea three people in the uk could have big mac meals while one person could have it in bosnia right so three people could eat in the uk for the same price that you're paying in bosnia very expensive very expensive okay so we got an idea of what the salary is what the big macs are now i'm pretty sure uh, groceries in bosnia are going to be cheaper than what groceries are in the uk the reason being is uk is an island right or multiple islands and bosnia is landlocked or land-based it's got a port as well i believe you're on the water so it's easier to get food products to Bosnia. I'm not sure why Big Mac is so expensive, relatively speaking anyway, right? I would say don't eat out. If you're living on major salary, first of all, you're gonna eat a lot healthier if you cook at home, okay? Eat fruits, vegetables, greens, get yourself nice organic eggs or eggs, uh, not too much meat but enough to give you your protein lots of beans and nuts and stuff like this right eat at home cook at home it's a hobby it's entertainment and whatever it might be right bosnia's potatoes cost one bag for one kilogram one bag for one kilogram i can do a potato cost for you well we did it for a big mac that's okay 
in, in Canada, potatoes are pretty cheap as well. Okay. Stay hydrated, drink water. So let's do our calculation here, right? So if we go on the low end scale, right? 50% uh, is going to be housing plus 10%. So that's 60% on the low end. You're putting into the absolute must, which is housing, food, and savings. On the extreme end, is 66% plus 10%. We're keeping this 10%. We're going to say 10%, 10% goes to savings, no matter what. Okay. Stick to that if you can. I cook at home most of the time and there are cheap restaurants that give you big meal for four bam. Awesome. Then why would you why would anyone ever eat at Big Mac? Uh go to McDonald's, right? It's crazy. In Belgium, potatoes are very cheap. We use it literally every day in different ways. Mash, fried, cooked. Uh -huh. Yeah, and potatoes phenomenal. Lots of minerals and stuff. Root vegetables are really good for you, right? Uh so you know what? Let's do this, man. Let's change this up. So we've got a low end five percent let's say five to ten percent goes to savings okay five percent oops not five percent this is going to be 55 percent and that's going to be 73 percent all right so if you're only calculating fun then over here for your fun you could go 45 percent for your fun or 30 27 percent for fun okay if you like you said, if you're planning on spending everything else on fun, and if you're young, that's okay to do, really. If you're just coming out, living by yourself for the first time, uh, and you got a roommate and whatnot, it's okay for a few years to spend everything you're bringing in, as long as you're putting some money into savings for fun. I don't recommend doing this forever, right? So this is must for you. That's your base. 55% to 73% of your salary has to go to must. What you got to spend on. Apples is also cheap and healthy. Apples, fantastic, right? Now, if you're doing fun, 45% to 27%, right? So that's what we got right now. Now keep this in mind. There's absolutely no way you can spend $500 on rent if you're making 700 per month. Okay, you can't. So let's figure out what the maximum rent has to be for you to be living somewhere. Oh, I have no friends. One of them died of a blood clot. Oh man, when he was sleeping the other ghosted me while they were uh, going through depression ah oh, that's unfortunate taco but, but friends will come new friends will come i have friends that i had when i was very young there's a wasp in here. there's a wasp or a bee i don't know what that was so i have friends uh, you know a handful of friends that i had from very young and i've made phenomenal friends along the way as I got older and older and older, right? I have very close friends that I've had, maybe like I got introduced to like five years ago and have very close friends on the same level that I've had for like 30 years, right? Works colleagues can become easily your friends. They can be for sure, for sure. Not all of them, be selective, right? Slowly allow people to come into your life and see who you want to introduce into your life more and more, right? So based on what we have, let's figure out what rent and food are going to be, right? What you can spend on rent and food. Okay. So here's rent. Oops. Rent. And here's food. Okay. So if we do 55% of 700, let's bring out our calculator. Yeah, I just need to meet co-workers and become friends and people on the street and people on the street and hobbies you can join board you know people who play board games there's lots of uh activities that cities offer you right you can join you know going out for 
a walk in the forest with a group or a running group or a bike riding group or whatever it might be, right? Let's figure out what 25% of this is. So 700 times 0.25, you get 175 to 33, oops, 700 times 0.33 to 231 that's the recommended what up you do dante how are you doing how's the life we're doing a budget for taco <laughs> okay what's up you doing good ginger good doing good doing my taxes <laughs> i wouldn't call this taxes oh by the way we're not even calculating taxes but if you do it right you shouldn't really have to pay too much taxes right and the odds are you're where you're working also takes money off taxes so the fun aspect taxes is included in this right so this is your salary based on what they what the recommendation is anywhere between a quarter to a third of your salary goes to rent and the same deal would be here food 31 ban okay fun if you're going by the percentages we have 0.45 times 700 is 315 or 0.25 times 700 189 okay so let's do the calculation right now and then we're going to expand it i still don't understand how you survive on that uh, it's very slim I think one of the things Taco was mentioning that he's he's gonna get the job he's gonna create some savings and then he's gonna move out and we talked about this before I put out a little video it's not enough to save you must also invest which is something that we're gonna expand on here okay so check this out let's do a total here whenever you're doing a budget always do running totals that way you know you haven't made any miscalculations right so we're going to add all this up it should add up to 700 we're going to add all that up it should add up to 700. my monthly wage in bosnia mark is five thousand. wow that's good but remember martin the living in the uk is way more expensive right you're rich in bosnia standards right like for example taco how much is a beer in bosnia and martin how much is a beer in the uk when i was in ireland or Europe beer was ridiculously expensive compared to Canadian dollars right uh, so different things cost different I'm gonna add all these up so 175 plus 175 is just 350 plus 315 hey we're missing something oh we forgot about the savings look at this we forgot about the savings we gotta add savings in here right savings savings is going to be five percent of 700 right three pounds is beer which is 450 which is the same price as we pay actually it's a little bit less than what we pay so not bad how much is a beer in uh, bosnia taco 0 0.05 times 700 is 35 bam and 10% is going to be 70 band. All right. So let's do a total here. Okay. Cheapest beer is one band to like three band. Very cheap. And I don't uh, go drinking that often. Per pint is roughly five pounds. Oh, pint is five pounds. Okay. So it's more expensive uh, in the UK than it is in Canada. Here you can get uh, beers for around. A pint you can get specials you can go there and it's like four dollars canadian or six dollars canadian five dollars in general anywhere between five plus or minus a dollar per pint okay so now we can add all this up so 350 plus 315 plus 35 700 right and all of these should add up to 700 uh, times two plus uh, 189 plus 70. Hey, we're above that. What happened? 231 
plus 231 plus 189 plus 70. Hey, this came out to 721, so I punched something wrong in here. It could be the round up error. 0.33 times 700. That's correct. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 0.27 times 700. That is correct. Did I do a miscalculation here? All of those should add up to. So 66 plus uh, 10 plus 20. Oh, that's why. That's a wrong number. That's 66. I did 63. My mistake. So that's 66 plus 10 is 76. So this guy should be 4. 24 percent so this guy is 0.24 times 700 oops 700 times 0.24 is 168 right 168 that's why you should always do a running total right let me erase this to make it clear so you see that's 24 percent 24 percent right uh, clubs are in the hundred yeah clubs is crazy go as high as 450 clubs is yeah clubs man i've done the club scene it's too expensive but i live in cheap area not london it varies where you live but it's real expensive in london over 10 near in Birmingham okay I don't live in the UK but I visited London last year yeah the centers are really expensive I'm just gonna add those guys up make sure we're plus 168 plus 70 is 700 okay so this matches with what we're making that's our core budget right now right that's our core budget so you're gonna take 35 BAM minimum put in your savings or 70 band minimum put in your savings depending on what you know what you're deciding on if you're doing that then your entertainment is much less right reduce the fun percentage yeah reduce the fun percentage so this is how you get started with your budget then you have to think about your stuff now you can do this for a year if you want you know find a cheap place 25 percent right get your roommates remember 175 bam is not very much so you need at least one roommate to get a place that is 350 bam right but you said it was 500 for a two bedroom so i'm pretty sure you could find a one bedroom for th 350 bam per month oh no you said it was a thousand seven hundred yeah if you find a low-end apartment one bedroom right for 700 bam and divide that by two that's 350 bam that's still even more than that right you got to find a cheap place to live or roommates not even one right i like one to two bedroom reduce the fun percentage for sure so if you reduce the fun percentage you're kicking up you could either put it into housing food savings or investing and that's what i would recommend so i would say kick down the fund percentage let's take this it is a monthly budget still right take your fund I'm just making more room take your fund factor break this up keep the fund but reduce it and make this invest okay so fun factor let's kick it down by 50% corruption is a bitch oh, we're gonna let this allow this auto mod doesn't like certain words. Corruption is a bitch, 100%. So we're gonna kick this down, divide these by two, okay? Just so we make fun equal to investing because investing could be fun, right? So if we kick this down by two, let's just say we're gonna make 20 fun, 23%. And we're going to make investing 22%. Um, That's about the same. 
and this one's going to be 12 percent to 12 percent okay so what we're going to do now is change these numbers so we're expanding our budget the category that we have this has been fun guys but got to go hope you enjoy scotland hope you're enjoying scotland heading out to eat enjoy just don't go to big max <laughs> nicholas no mcdonald's you too nicholas you too have fun math is good. math is brilliant dude the only the only reason l piguin zero the only the only reason you would say that is because you really don't appreciate how powerful it is right if you don't appreciate how powerful something is there's two natural instincts that people have you fear it and you think it's crap right don't get caught in that trap how much percent of income should the average joe invest uh, it depends on the income if you're baking here's the thing with our current society right i need a big back after this here's the, here's the thing with our current society everybody needs a certain amount of money to pay for housing to pay for food right medical bills or whatever it might be right we all need to do that so let's take a hypothetical situation let's assume everybody needs to put just in my area let's say or let's any area let's say you got a thousand this could be a thousand dollars or a thousand pounds let's assume this is what you need for housing or food we're not including entertainment anything else right now if you're making person a a is making let's say thousand dollars they got no money left over for anything else person b if they're making fifteen hundred dollars they got five hundred dollars they could spend for savings or fun or whatnot person c is making two thousand dollars they got a thousand dollars they can do person d is making twenty thousand right so your question comes in uh, da -da -da -da. where was the question how much percent of income should the average person person joe invest this is where inequality comes into play here right these three people are barely living barely have any exp any funds to invest really this person has all the money they can invest in the world if their base is 1000 we're going to assume obviously if you're making a ton of money your base is going to go up too because you become extravagant some do anyway right if this person starts investing even ten thousand half of what they're making if they invest half of what they're making they're still making ten thousand they can have fun with and party with pay these people with right they can have employees right and this situation is exactly what's happened in the western world right there's a class of society that has gotten free money through qe and whatnot right through the government's taking taxpayer money and handing it over to wall street so they don't have to worry about the base all they have to worry about is where they're going to put their money to be, get more money and what once that happens you start getting what we talked about which is called differential accumulation they're waking making way more than the averages so in the limit they own everything there is a serious flaw in our current economic political system once you start looking at the numbers it really pops out yet yeah, pops out at you don't mind losing to a certain degree right math is math is language of science i think like 13 13 to 17 percent is fine mm, da, 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 da. is that for investing what if i want to sell the open street i like one kilo uh well you don't want to do that because uh you might get burned and you you don't want to uh, you do have to know mathematics if you're if you're on the streets doing your thing you need to know mathematics if you don't know mathematics you're a runner at best right if you have some amount of money you will only get more yeah why is person d a roommate he can buy a house in a year sure 
but houses have expenses. So let's assume he doesn't have to be a roommate, by the way. I'm not saying that these people are roommates. I'm saying that these people, this is how much they make, right? This person doesn't need to be living in an apartment on this level. They could live in a much better house, right? So for example, they could take 5,000 and rent a house, right? They still have another 5,000 to put for food savings and fun, right? So I'm a college kid living at home with a part-time job, but I only pay about 150 a month. I have around four grand saved up. Should I start investing? You should definitely start investing, Ginger definitely start investing prison might affect your income martin says most definitely you will gooch. gooch how are you doing okay so keep this in mind what we're talking about is what every day drew blow what we have to think about but our current political economic system is geared towards allowing money to beget money right and keep this in mind because that's where investing comes into play okay so let's erase this okay we got savings we're gonna change the savings numbers okay we're gonna say investing we're putting in investing here okay if we're gonna change this one investing this is gonna be 35 and 35 divided by 2 is gonna be um, blah 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 <laughs> 35 divided by 2 is 17 right 17 18 so we're gonna make the 17 right and we're gonna make this 18 and this is gonna be 35 okay the total of this should be 700 we're gonna do another running total you always do running totals always okay investing stock gold or real estate or collectibles okay you should get a driver's license if you don't have one um, sure driver's license works but you don't necessarily need a driver's license okay Bitcoin you could start trading it right uh, but if you're doing cryptocurrencies for the long term that would go under savings if you're actively trading that would go under investing right or gambling okay so we got 350 oops 350 plus 315 plus 18 plus 17. so that's 700 right and 235 plus Two th sorry 231 plus 231 plus 168 plus 35 plus 35 that's 700 so our totals add up okay I have license but no car I was saving for one if you get a car you have expenses but you can also use the car to make extra money as well right to do deliveries and stuff like this so keep in mind a car in if you go to a financial advisor you tell them oh i have three cars those are assets those are liabilities a car is not considered to be an asset unless it's a collectible car right something that over the over time will increase in value and that sort of goes in the category of collectibles okay that's what you're going to be investing money in search for a used cars and make yourself an uber driver yeah there's a lot of people are not making too much money on uber right now i live in la la los angeles been there many times what a trippy city insurance is like extortion for young people they charge too much agreed 100 percent game at home mom. i'm hello right you could also work as a bum you could right you could go sit on the sidewalk and beg for money if that is your thing okay so take a look at this so that's these are basically money thrown away gone so this is bye-bye right over here 
This money begets money, brings money back. Okay. My sword is out. Nice. Thanks, Martin. <laughs> the lottery's four man's tax. Yes, 100% four man's tax, right? So keep in mind, this money is gone, right? So let's count this out. This ended up being anywhere between 55% to 66% of your income is gone, right? So let's figure out here. Let me change this up because I want to show you how, how important it is to invest. Okay. So this over here means that 55% if you add all those up well it came out to whatever it was here we'll do it again 350 plus 350 is 665 to 231 plus 231 plus 168 is 630 hey how come it came out 630 oh yeah because that's that okay so this money here you're using every month gone from that right if you subtract that you end up getting subtract this from this you end up getting 35 to what we talked about 70 bam per month to either put into savings or investing now let's assume you put that into savings, right? Now savings right now is not gonna give you too much money. Uh, well, it depends where you are actually. In Canada, where should I start investing? We'll talk about that, okay? Let's cover the savings bit first, okay? Beggars in Bosnia make more uh, money than a good paying job from tourists and people who have low street smarts. Yeah, and that's in Canada as well. There are people who do hustle on the streets and they can make anywhere between on a good day and I've talked with them on a good day anywhere between 100 to 200 plus cash per day right one of the places that people hustle a lot to make cash money right is they go to the beach one of the nude beaches in Vancouver or the only nude beach in Vancouver and people drink there so they go up and down the beach and they collect bottles and cans not bottles bottles are too expensive too heavy to you know trek up the, the stairs and stuff like this so a lot of people drink cans because they're lighter to carry so they hustle and they grab all the cans and at the end of the day they got like bags full of cans and they take it to the uh, bottle depot and they deposit that and they get cash back right so if you hustle you can make good money right I don't recommend that as a lifestyle but it is what it is right sometimes that doesn't affect your monthly bills it doesn't i only help the extreme beggars yeah i personally don't uh i used to but i don't give any more money to uh, if you want to call them beggars but people on the streets working the streets okay uh for multiple reasons some i'm uh, not sure sometimes like sometimes i don't i try not to okay so depending on where you are if you put money in a savings account in canada you get nothing like it's one percent best you could do is like two percent it's nothing but we can calculate that if you put your money in a savings account in iran i know this because i know people who, who, who do this they can give you almost 20 percent return right the reason they do that is because their currency the value of the money is dropping right their buying power is dropping there's inflation so just because you live in a country which is giving you high percent uh, into your savings doesn't mean your buying power is more you're going to be making a lot more money it means the odds are the buying power of the currency is decreasing okay Bosnia has no bottle depots and there is a littering problem and people could make a depot uh, to have less littering oh wow there's no recycling eh? saw a guy buy cigarettes with my money that was the end of that yeah yeah it's one that's one of the reasons for sure right more than others so savings gives you nothing but let's assume Bosnia. Uh, by the way taco 
I'm not sure if you would knew that know this. What's your savings? What's the percent you get back from savings? Right? If you put your money in a savings account in Bosnia, I I don't know how much it would be, depending on what the Bosnian currency is doing, the economy is doing, right? But for argument's sake, let's say it's five percent, right? So let's assume the savings gives you back five percent. If that's not correct, not in the right, right ballpark, let me know, Taco, and we'll change it up, right? So let's assume this is 5%. Here, let's do a little eraser here. 5%. Okay. 5% goes into savings. You don't have a savings account, it's just money in the bank. Oh, so you get zero. Wow, that sort of sucks. <laughs> so be right back my dog needs to go potty okay go do it taco i won't ask you questions until you come back right so okay that's not gonna work with taco they get no money so we're gonna go with canada you get two percent in canada we're gonna assume you're gonna get something back for savings okay two percent so if you get two percent back that means you're gonna get at the end of the month 1.2 zero nine percent is that what it is in europe right now the take by the way if you take inflation into account you're losing money right two percent inflation per year that's what centralized banks shoot for if you don't get money you're losing two percent right you just multiply this at the end of the month this 18 band that you have is really whoops 18 times 0.98 is really Hey, what happened 18 times 0 0.98 is really 17.64 bam right oh in bosnia is 1.2 okay let's use 1.2 thanks martin or is that the inflation anyway we'll uh, let's stick with two percent why not let's make it simple okay assuming that interest rates might go up what's the GDP in Bosnia I don't know a little search should pop it up so 18 times 1.02 at the end of the month if you do your savings you're gonna have 18.36 bam and 35 times 0 0.02 you're gonna have 35.7 bam okay now what happens just just google it okay. now if that's the case then next month after your first month beginning of your second month that you're putting money into the bank you no longer have 700 bam to work with you have 700 on the low end if investing let's assume we're not concerned investing you have 700 point well we're going to double that because that's what it would have gone in there you got 700.70 bam to work with per capita just that's 5180 per capita and on this end you have 701.4 bam to work with okay now if you're invest investing that is dependent on where you're investing money right are you gonna put in a stock market are you gonna buy real estate where if you're buying real estate you also have to it becomes more complicated because you have to pay interest you're hoping that real estate value is gonna go up are you gonna buy collectibles such as comic books art whatever it might be are you gonna buy products online right and flip them and sell them for more right are you gonna buy uh, lots of things lots meaning uh, something being sold in a package buy it break it up and sell it in parts because there's a lot of different ways you can do it okay but for now let's assume that you're gonna buy something you're going to be flipping things on the short term and we're going to assume you know what it is you're doing we're running out of helium 
we're running out of helium, are we? <laughs> we might be. <laughs> right? So let's assume you know what you're doing and you're going to be flipping things on a monthly basis and your return on your investment is going to be anywhere between 20 to 50 percent. Now, keep in mind for you to do investing, you also have to put time in. So whatever you're investing in, if you're going to be flipping things, if it's not a passive investment where you're just taking money and put in the stock market and just forgetting about it, right? You could do that. But I would consider that part of savings, not part of investing. Okay. Investing, I would consider taking a hobby that you're doing, something that you're interested in, and working with your money to be get more money. Do you think uh, collectibles are smart bet? It probably depends on the collectible. It depends on the collectibles and their smart bet. That's where I put my money. Here, comic books, right? Like I bought this guy for, I don't know, like $4 Canadian, 4 or $5 Canadian, right? And this one we did a comic book haul with. I forget how much I paid for this one, like $2 or something like this. I could probably sell this guy for like 20 okay? And this one, a little bit more, maybe 10% more, 20% more, or whatever it is, right? Underdog. <laughs> nice, right? So depending on what you're buying and your knowledge of your collectible, you could, this percent that you're making could be negative. It could be negative as well. You make bad decisions. I bought stuff that has gone down in value for sure, right? But I bought stuff that has gone up in value huge, right? As far as comic book goes. I sold comic books, which I, you know, I would have bought for a dollar or two dollars, and I've sold them a few months later back in the day for like 50, 60, 100 dollars, right? That's a huge return, right? But I would have bought some other stuff, which was fluff as well, that has gone down in value, right? So it takes a little bit of knowledge and getting used to, but collectibles is art as well, and one of the places that uh, I've seen a lot of increase in value are collectibles okay like Canadian art on average over the last 20 years has gone up 25% per year right 25% per year hmm. never thought about investing in a hobby I I enjoy thank you my pleasure ginger 100% that's one recommendation I would give to anyone if you want to invest and if you have the time and if you have a hobby something you take pleasure in man why in the world would you give your excess money to wall street to manage when you can take your excess money have fun with it and turn it into an investment right by the way chicho you have a beer uh you heard the news uh, from austria yeah uh, i forget who posted it on uh, discord is that the guy who got caught on tape uh talking to someone from russia that he was willing to do favors uh pass laws and government or something or bring bills about uh is that that you posted that dante yeah that's it where he would be willing to sell his services to a russian investor right but this person the tape came out for a russian investor right a, a russian oligarch now i'm pretty sure the scumbag would be willing to do that for any oligarch from any country offering to buy the most popular newspaper and push his party cool cool i have a first print of death of superman yeah the death of superman uh, the, in the black bag martin that thing when it came out here let me tell you a story about the death of superman that thing when it came out i was buying you know i've been buying comics for a long time right and I was buying at the time I was going to university I was also working a co-op uh, so I was work, making money four months out of the year going to school for four months and I realized that just salary I got into investing a long time ago right because I realized just working on salary is a loser's game right you have to get your money to get money right so at the time this death of Superman was um, you could see it coming right like i have the first appearance of doomsday the comic books and stuff like this yeah opened up to oops 
<laughs> values not very much <laughs> right the government was broken up and they uh announced elections yeah yeah that's the one that's good that's good dante fantastic right i wish i wish what was happening in austria where it comes out that politicians are corrupt to the core as soon as they get caught they should call elections right off the bat in every country right uk should have it us should have it canada should have it elections right away no unopened ah unopened now check this out about the death of superman at the time i was actively buying comics from three different comic stores okay one of them had my pull list and the other two i would go visit and i would sometimes place orders for the death of superman i got the poly bag one right i ordered 10 copies from the comic book store that had my pull list i ordered 10 copies from the other three the other two comic book stores too right so the comic book store that i was pulling they gave me my 10 copies one of the other comic books that i ordered 10 they gave me my 10 copies another comic book store i have whole series nice the other comic book store told me that oh they didn't get their order they lied right and i was like what are you talking about you, of course you guys got your comics they said oh we're sorry we sold it to other people blah 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 when the death of superman first came out it hit the mainstream news right it, i think the price on it was like two dollars or 225 or something like this or 250 right the same day it was selling for a hundred dollars on the streets in toronto okay so this third comic book store took the 10 copies that they promised me that i had ordered right that i went to pick up they sold it for a lot more than what they were selling me uh, what i was going to pay for them because i was paying cover price for them, plus a little discount i got right so that comic store was a scam there's a lot of comic stores like this there's less so now a lot more in the 90s right less so now because of the internet right so the 20 comic books that i got the death of superman i was also going to trade shows i was in university right i was also going to trade shows and selling comics so i sold out of the 20 that i got and then later on they told me oh we'll get your comics like after it died down they gave me the 10 like three weeks later right because they couldn't peddle them anymore so i said you know what i'll just grab five or whatever it was out of all the bad comic death of superman comics i had i think i have like four of them left the rest of them i sold anywhere between 20 to 30 dollars right so just think about that i paid let's say two dollars for them and i sold them or 250 for them i think they were 250 20 to 50 dollars right within a couple of months within a month really i was doing comic book shows and stuff like this so that's a thousand you know if you if you call it 25 that's a thousand to two thousand percent return investing huge huge comic book shop treachery there's a there was a lot of comic book stores that are bad right bad people just like any place like the art uh the art industry wall street and stuff like this there's a lot of places that scam people right when my grandpa passed away uh, she handed down some paintings she owned worth 20 30 k so i'm pretty lucky gonna wait till they're worth a little more yeah for sure ginger i would i would look into it as well look into you could chart the price of those paintings and if they got a nice stable rise hold on to them right if they're showing a boop, pop maybe flip them who knows right as far as investing goes let's assume you're a smart investor you can make instead of two percent twenty percent now remember we're talking sometimes you can make a lot more right but let's assume twenty percent if you do twenty percent let's go point two here uh, 17 times 1.2 you get 20 20.4 to 
35 times 1.2, 42. 42 BAM, right? Now, this is the point we're going to focus on, right? If you're making 700 BAM per month, right? In your first month, you made 700 BAM, right? Oh, by the way, this 2% is per year. I did it per month. <laughs> my, my apologies. It's actually less than this. But let's assume you're going to get 2% per month. It's, it actually it won't be 2% per month. My bad. Let's change this up. Let's change this up. There's no way you would get 2% per month. Not in my part of the world anyway. If you're investing, you could get 20% per month. Easy. If you're smart about it. Okay. But yeah, you know what? Let's change this up too. We're talking years, but we're gonna change this up. My apologies, I go on tangents and I lose track of things, right? Let's assume you're getting 0.5%, which makes it 6% per annum for not doing compounding or whatnot, right? So 0.5, so it's gonna be 18 times uh, 1.005. This is going to be 18.09 and that's going to be 35 times point one zero zero five. Boop. that's going to be 35.175 let's assume this is going to be you can get 24 percent per year so it's two percent right two percent per month and again keep in mind you can get more than this right two percent per month so 17 times 1.02 is seventeen point three four thirty five times one point zero two is thirty five point seven right per month now at the beginning of the first month you have seven hundred bam let me put this down seven hundred bam at the beginning of next month hey what's your opinion on automation do you think the labor force is in the imminent trouble yeah ginger I put out videos if you do Chicho automation just do my name Chicho and then automation in any search engine duck, duck, go, right or the other one <laughs> right? if you do a search on that you'll see a video that I put out regarding automation and we've talked about automation before but and if you look at that video that belongs in a playlist called personal finance. So I have a whole bunch of videos on personal finance and we talk about automation and whatnot. Automation, huge deal. People really don't appreciate how big this is, okay? So at the beginning of your first month, you got 700 BAM to work with. Next month, you're still gonna get 700 BAM. However, you invest it. So you're gonna get 700 bam plus this and this which is going to be point zero oops not point zero point four three two this one which is going to be seven hundred and point eight seven five bam right so all of a sudden you've given yourself a raise it's not much it's not much but it's a raise right if you want to figure out what the raise is you go this minus that divided by 700 so you're going to go 0 0.875 on the extreme side let's do that one divided by 700 you just gave yourself a 0.125 percent raise right 0 0.125 percent raise from your previous month right now if you're smart about it you're investing more a fair bit of your salary into something that's giving you two percent per month okay which you can do okay two percent per month one percent per month doesn't make a difference then what's happening is you're automatically increasing your salary right so if you're working let's say with 20 people everyone's getting 700 band and no one's investing and you are 
at the beginning of next month you're making or end of next month you're making more money 0.125 percent more money than the other people now consider this the example i gave you with person a b c and d if person d is making twenty thousand and you're making one thousand right if person b is making twenty thousand and they're taking a fair bit of their money and putting into investing and they're getting one percent point five percent two percent or more per month or per year then all of a sudden their salary just their interest that they're making on money that they're investing surpasses your wages right and that's what's creating the divide right huge 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 investing should be in everybody's budget i have a high rate isa account very good for making good in interest awesome yeah and you can just get straight up places where you can put your money in which gives you it locks your money in in general if you're locking your money in if you want higher percent you got to lock your money in that means you can't take your money out it's not accessible right you lock it in for minimum a year five years whatever it is right barbarian hello chicho your plan looks really good investing in hobby and art do you have a plan for an artist too you know art related people are mostly fail on uh, planning and having lack of living yeah one of the reasons uh, a lot of artists uh, struggle uh, with life with keeping their expenses uh, managing their budget is because they forget that there's a whole economic system foundation to our societies right now so they forget that it's not enough to be passionate about something to put a lot of time and energy towards something okay they forget that they also have to make a certain amount of money to be able to pay their bills and also take some of that money and invest in their art right so they're idealists they're living in a dream world which is a beautiful world really beautiful world until the weight of the world comes down on them where they have major unfortunate expenses that might pop up and they find themselves you know leaving their art behind homeless sur couch surfing asking people for to borrow money and whatnot i'm guilty of that as well right you know not having my feet planted on the ground where i forget about i mismanage my finances because i see something that brilliant that i think it, i'm totally passionate about and i blow my budget and do whatever it is that i'm doing right but i've learned over the years to be a little bit better at that right and that's because of mathematics okay exercise caution in your business affairs for the world is full of trickery 100 percent max Irraman. i can't pronounce that name 2.3 percent but yeah it's fixed and no quick access yeah no quick access and 2.3 percent that's breaking even right relative to inflation right and that requires very minimal time and energy on martin's part where he's locked something at 2.3 percent 2.3 percent is still not bad relative to certain places in the world right certain places in the world 2.3 percent is not very good okay uh there are places where you can lock your lock your money and invest that you can get better returns uh, but it requires a little bit of time and energy put in to learn those systems okay uh, and it requires flipping it requires flipping there's very few places right now where you can park your money there, there are for example on wall street there are stocks that give you a yield of five percent and they're stable right so if you don't care about the fluctuation in the stock price very much right then you could buy those stocks 
that give you three, four, five, six, seven. I've seen stocks that give you constant dividend yield return of six percent, right? And their stock prices are fairly stable. Mm -hmm. I was like that when I was young, but a man can only mend his ways after he has made many mistakes. One hundred percent, Mark. Yeah, me, me too. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. That's why I pay attention to this now, right? Investment mistakes and whatnot, right? And I made a lot of phenomenal choices in my investment decisions. I want this five percent. I want this. <laughs> oh yeah, Chicho, almost for uh, plot to tell you. I forgot to tell you. I was at the movies the other day when uh, Darren, oh Malakion, walked in. He was uh, super cool, and I got a picture with him. Awesome, awesome. That's the guitarist for System of a Down. System is my favorite band. Yeah, they put out some amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. Okay. Anyway, this was this was good to do. I really like this. Uh, fun to do. Uh, we hadn't done anything serious budget like this. We've talked about it before in math videos and ASMR math and making a to-do list and making a budget and stuff. But we didn't really break it down at this level, sort of making a point, right? Fun things to do, fun things to do. Play around it. And if you're smart about it, and you have to be patient, really be patient and have fun with it. If your only purpose is to make money, then, uh, you know, uh, be careful, be careful. Okay. Maybe we can see a plan for artists too in the future uh, from you. A plan for an independent comic artist who is having a, a lock of living. Uh, for sure, we can do Barbarian. Uh, I, I'd be happy to actually. Uh, just suggestions and stuff. Uh, for me, I can tell you straight up, if I was a comic book artist right now, if I was doing the publishing that I did back in the 90s now, I would create a website, do crowdfunding, share a page at a time or a couple of pages at a time or a page a day just to get interest and create a Patreon account and create an Instagram account and create all these different accounts on different social platforms and put that out there and I would make videos on um, what do you call it how to you know I would make videos showing how I do my drawings and read out my stuff so I would engage I would share as much info as I could with my audience ginger my mate lives in LA Burbank I think that's sick yeah I've uh, seen a lot of celebrities yeah LA I used to go to LA a lot I've been many times i don't know like many times many times i haven't gone there for like 18 years now but for about 20 years of my life i went there two to three times a year uh, for at least like 10 years we'd go so i've been there like ridiculous ridiculous amount of time one of the things i did uh many moons ago in uh when was it what year was it i can't remember what year was it is mid 90s mid 90s late 90s uh no er, late 80s it was late 80s uh i went to a function an armenian function like a sporting event or something in la we stayed in a hotel uh across from the chinese man theater i forget what hotel it was called marriott or something like this and uh there was a function we had like a gala event like further away so we took the bus there and everyone drove there and we we're at doing this gala event and i was like i don't want to be here we had the dinner and stuff like this and people were partying i said i want to go check out la so i put on my little top hat i had a little hat and scarf i was dressed up in a suit i grabbed a bottle of <laughs> alcohol from the bar there and i put it in a bag and i just walked and I got to Hollywood Boulevard and I was like miles away from where the hotel was and I wanted to hot walk Hollywood Boulevard so at nighttime I don't know what time it was with a, my bottle I just walked down Hollywood Boulevard until I got to Manning the Chinese theater it was super fun in and out burger is where my funds go <laughs> in and out burger <laughs> in and out burger has some good burgers 
Last time I ate one of those was in the 90s. That's a good burger. I met Jean Claude once in Hong Kong. Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, I've seen some. I sat, uh, one time I sat just on comic book related at the Vancouver uh, Film Festival. Okay. We were watching, I went to the movie called Sunday Bloody Sunday. Uh, it's an Irish uh, sort of a documentary movie about uh, what transpired when uh, the UK occupying forces killed a lot of civilians in uh, Belfast, right? So it was a documentary on that. And I sat down in my chair and right beside me was Wolverine. The And he's tall. I forget what his name is. Uh, the person who's played Wolverine for the last like two decades, right? He was sitting right beside me and he was a big guy like geez Louise man He made me look like a little guy and he was sitting there. I was like, dude <laughs> Nice, I think he had done the first uh, movie January 1972. Yeah, horrendous event horrendous event. I'm back taco. We finished I met a nice lady with two cute dogs. <laughs> nice <laughs> That's where he went to What's your favorite burger place you chose? Um, uh, just local burger places, not chains. I don't go to chains. I, I, I don't eat at chains anymore. Personally, I like homemade burgers. Hugh Jackman, that's it. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I sat sat beside Hugh Jackman, uh, watching Sunday Bloody Sunday at a Vancouver Film Festival. That was fun. That was fun. This was a good stream gang i loved it i loved it that's the thing i love uh doing these streams and not knowing really what we're going to talk about and then we just go crazy and talk about whatever we want to talk about regarding what uh mathematics anyway what was it? oh i can't remember his accent i can't remember is he irish or is he american us i don't know i was yeah i don't know sorry for what i said when i was deep in my cups last night no game at home mom no apologies necessary i i was laughing my ass off right he's australian is he oh he's australian that makes sense that makes sense almost time for pub almost time for pub we're gonna call the stream right now anyway martin so pub time for you uh ozzy ozzy osborne what I work as a baker right now. Nice. I love the chemistry of baking and I've made your honey chocolate chip cookies. They're awesome. Oh, awesome, Ginger. Yeah, I make those on a regular basis. They're good cookies. It took me a while to get it down packed. Uh, and I can make them gluten free now, too. Right? Because I have people that are eating it that they want it to be gluten free. So I messed around and got the gluten free recipe going with that, too. So I can make a gluten-y or gluten-free cho honey chocolate chip cookies. I'm glad you're liking them, man. That's and that's a huge compliment from a baker. Thank you, thank you. There's a lot more baking I'm going to show you guys as well at some point. ACDC in Australia has a nickname called Akada. Akadaka. Akadaka. Really, the texture was kind of unique, but I love them. Yeah. I love the texture it's like crunchy on the outside and then like chewy on the inside but it's crumbly as well it's weird texture yeah fun thanks for being here gang um as far as the next stream goes we've got two more streams lined up well i guess four more but we're going to do three streams tomorrow 10 by 10 puzzle an hour a pop right had a chance to watch the new chernobyl tv series uh not yet i grabbed number two last night I have number one but I haven't watched them yet I'm going through space dandy right now just so you know I'm on the last three episodes of space dandy again I have 26 it's like the third time I'm watching it so right now my watching time is when I have the time I'm sitting down and watching space dandy I love that series cooking tip if your sauce is too runny uh, and flour cooking tip if your sauce is too runny add flour yep 100 percent 100 uh so tomorrow we're going to do three live streams uh an hour pop 10 by 10 puzzle okay i think we start at 1 p.m tomorrow if you're around uh one and then three and then 
five, I believe, or six. And then six, I believe. I'm a qualified chef. Nice, nice. We've got chefs and bakers here, cooks and bakers. Uh, and then on Monday, we're going to go in the kitchen. And I think I'm going to make cuckoo. Okay. We've got, I got lots of vegetables, lots of greens in the fridge. And I'm going to go get some more. I got lots of eggs that I got to use up. So I think we're going to make a whole bunch of cuckoo on Monday. Tomorrow is the Chicho L Marathon. Chicho, yeah. Chicho 10 by 10 puzzle marathon. <laughs> Fun. Anyway, gang, thanks for being here. Thanks for participating. Thank you, Nicholas. Yeah, I know he's gone for recommending that we do some kind of budget. Thank you, Taco, for giving us the numbers, right? What's going on? And just in case, here you go, Taco, because you just showed up. This is what we figured out. So if you're doing investing, you're going to make more money next month than you would 700. So instead of making 700, you make 700 round up one pound, one bam. Uh, okay. Uh, invest more, you make more. Salary, more. You start making your way up. Okay. Have fun, gang. Hope you have a fantastic Saturday. And I'll see you guys tomorrow if you can make it or Monday if you can make it. If not, in the next live streams. Okay. Bye for now. Boop. I'm going to spend it all in <laughs> talk. I love that. <laughs> you need more late shifts. You need more late shifts, Taco. 100%. Bye. Bye, gang.